Hello everyone, TLSG here, back again with another Daily Marvel Snap video. So I'm really excited because we have the new Series 5 card, Dazzler, and she came out just a couple of minutes ago. This is the first Series 5 card that I've gotten on refresh. Usually I have to wait a couple of times for it to pop up before I can buy it and build a deck out of it. Uh, but this time we have it right away. So we are going to go ahead and buy Dazzler, and then we're going to jump over into the deck build. Now, Dazzler is a four cost, four power card that has the ongoing ability if you have four cards at each location plus six power. Now, when you compare this to something like Hawk, who has the ongoing ability of plus two power for every card in your opponent's deck, you can trigger that whether it be a high roll, a mid roll. This one is more or less an all or nothing. I compare Dazzler very closely to something like a strong guy, only strong guy is a lot easier to control. Strong Guy is a 4 cost, 10 power if you trigger his ongoing ability, but you have control over what cards you have in your hand, and you can run discard cards. You can, you can empty your hand a number of ways, especially with some cards that are coming up next month. But Dazzler can be completely derailed by a Space Throne, by a Professor X. And so when you're building a deck with Dazzler, she can't be your only win condition. She cannot be the only thing that you are leaning on. Sim similar to when you're building a Hawk deck or really any successful deck, you can't rely too heavily on one particular thing. And so that is why we are merging the ideas between last week's Shanna Valkyrie deck and this week's Dazzler deck. That way we have a couple of different ways that we can win. We can flood a couple of Dazzlers on the board. If we get Moon Girl and we flood our hand beforehand, we can play Valkyrie onto the board. And if we trigger Dazzler's ongoing ability, Ant-Man's ongoing ability, if we have a Kazar or a Blue Marvel, those are things that will be able to give us that leg up compared to the opponent once Valkyrie hits. And if not, if we get the perfect draw, then we can potentially do Moon Girl into a double Dazzler, a double Shanna, which would be phenomenal. You're going to have a huge surge of power at the end of the game, but that's not going to happen reliably. And so I want to give you guys a deck that is going to perform reliably. And so this is what we are going to be running today. The Bast is replaceable. You can put in something like a, an Iceman, a Korg, or a Nightcrawler. Now, arguably, there's not a lot of great cards that it's going to hit. And so you could really easily replace Bast. But since I have it, I'm going to throw it in. Uh, the rest of the deck is designed to be able to flood all of your cards onto the board, as many cards as possible. Whether you get that double down with Moon Girl or not, the goal is to cap out your board and be able to trigger Dazzler if you draw her. If not, hit Valkyrie as a secondary game plan. Let's go ahead and jump over into a couple of games. I hope you guys enjoy. All right, first up, we are traveling a little bit. We are going to Pally. Now, Throne Room's decent for us. We're going to be able to double our power. If they push anything really, really large there, we can right size it with Valkyrie, and then Valkyrie actually doubles to six after its ability takes effect. And so not a bad first location. We're going to go ahead and throw Bast onto the board. We have our buff cards, our Kazar, our Blue Marvel. Um, and then we're just looking for how we flood from here. Um, we do get Zabu, so our four cost cards are going to be a little bit cheaper. And so if we get Moon Girl, it's going to be great. If we get Dazzler, that's okay. But we do want to start out by throwing our Zabu onto the board. And we have uh, four really good targets that we want to use our Zabu for. Um, so I think it at this point with Dazzler and Shanna, it makes it worthwhile to run it. Whereas last week, I don't think it was worthwhile. I'm going to go ahead and throw our Moon Girl and our Kazar onto the board. I don't necessarily care if Kazar gets doubled, but what I do care about is being able to flood the rest of the board if we need to. And so this is going to give us two Ant Men to throw onto the board. Um, I don't think we're going to be able to fully cap it out. We're going to have to look for which lane is our win lane. Ooh, the Sandman is um, uh, not great for us. Now, we do have the uh, Valkyrie, which is, a, which is phenomenal in the Red Skull lane. Uh, like the the most ideal play line we could ask for is the Valkyrie over there because we'll right size those to three. Uh, we'll right size ours to three as well. But Red Skull gives us that little bit of a bump. So I think we're going to throw our Shanna that we just drew onto the board. It's going to be a little bit of a gamble. We don't know. We just don't know. Uh, we could throw it into Throne Room to push four power there instead of two here. But I want to get closer to capping out the Fist Tower, just in case they have like an arrow or something that can move our cards. I want to try to protect them, if at all possible. Now, we don't get terrible cards. Uh, we get Bast, we get Ant-Man, and we get Agent 13 um, in Necrotia. 
So as long as they don't have a way to... Ooh, the Dracula in Necrotia feels like a little bit of overkill, honestly. How many cards do they have? They have four cards in hand. So do they have big resources here? And if so, I think we're, I think we're beaten. Um, we can't play multiple cards. Right-sizing this with Valkyrie would push us to nine power after Necrotia and Red Skull Resolve. Um, that would set them to two. They'd need a decent power push here. Um, but I also think they can take the throne room from us. So uh, we're going to we're gonna go ahead and do it. I kind of wish we had a second Shanna to fully cap out the rest of the locations, uh, but we don't. So it's going to come down to a read. Ooh, they do an Omega Red into Necrotia. And so we set that 2-3 with our Valkyrie. Can we win that location? What do they pull into? They pull into a Shang-Chi. So we do hold down the win. Not with the Dazzler. We don't even draw into Dazzler. But it turns out that we got, got pretty fortunate that we had enough of a power push early that Sandman was not able to slow us down enough to steal the win away. And so we are going to take those two cubes. Let's go ahead and jump over into the next one. All right, next up we have Zen. And the first location is the Vault. So we're going to need to push uh, quite a few cards there relatively early. Or if we draw into our Shanna, then we can kind of lean off and uh, hedge off a little bit so that the opponent thinks that they have it won or locked down. And then all of a sudden we can flood a lot of cards there. I am going to play both our Ant-Man and our Quinjet. We have our Dazzler, our Valkyrie, our Kazar, but right now we don't have our Zabu. We don't have our Moon Girl. Uh, we do now have Zabu and Elysium to help us lean in to these locations. I'm going to go ahead and play Zabu into Elysium, and we are hoping for the Moon Girl here. Uh, Moon Girl would be beautiful, or potentially a Shanna and a Squirrel Girl eventually would also be really, really big. Now, they did... There's the Moon Girl, or there's the Squirrel Girl, which is not bad. Now, they did just discard their Infinite, so they could go with a Ghost Rider into the Vault to try to lock it down. Uh, if we time it just right, we can counter that with a Valkyrie and set that Infinite's power to three. Uh, do we, are we able to make that happen? I don't know. I'm going to go ahead and just play Kazar. Uh, we're going to see what we draw into next. We're going to see if they maybe get greedy and they resummon. No, they play a Gambit. Oh, the Gambit discards their Ghost Rider though. So they can no longer resummon their, uh, their Infinite unless they have a Hela, which they might. Wouldn't be the weirdest thing I've ever seen. They might have a Hela. I'm going to go ahead and try to lose initiative here. We're going to just play our Blue Marvel. We're going to hold our Squirrel Girl and our Valkyrie. We'll be able to play both of those into the Wakanda Embassy. And if we don't have initiative, as long as it's not against the Morbius or a Dracula, uh, then we should be able to find our win. So the Calling Wing comes down. It discards a Swarm. Ah, that's not great. But we will we'll try to shoot our shot. So we do get... So we do successfully lose our initiative here. We're going to go ahead and... We're going to lean in with the Squirrel Girl, with the Valkyrie. As long as they don't flood with this with too much power... We might stand a chance, but we probably lose this one. If this was for very many cubes, we would go ahead and retreat. They do have the Hela, which ooh pushes their Ghost Rider into the Vault, which is not going to do it for them. And their Infinite goes into Elysium. Even if it had come into the Wakanda Embassy Lane, that would have been uh, fine. We are going to use our Valkyrie, and I think that allows us to find our win just barely, maybe by one point by a couple of points because of the Blue Marvel and the Khazar. So we do beat the Hela Resummon. Uh, not comfortably, but we do. It, they could have resummoned in a way that it would have pushed their power where they needed it. Thankfully, they did not. We will take our cheeky two cubes. Let's jump over into the next one. We are still looking to use our Dazzler here. It is admittedly very difficult to consistently get her to trigger in a meaningful way. Let's go ahead and jump over into the next one and search for the Dazzler win. Next up, we have AU Star Wars. The first location is Monster Metropolis, which is decent. In our opening hand, we have a beautiful, beautiful opening hand. I think this may be the time. We have our Zabu. We have our Moon Girl. We have our Dazzler, our Shanna, our Kazar. We're going to be able to start flooding those resources onto the board uh, after turn four. And I think we might be able to make this one happen. We are hoping. I'm not going to snap because I just want to see Dazzler work. I want to see it pay off. And I don't think it's going to be one of those, at least in this build, where she is the core build around. I think it's just going to be too inconsistent for the most part. Um, now, I think there might be ways to build her. Maybe that's with additional resources. Maybe that's with additional time to find those combinations. But I do think as of right now, it is a tough sell. We're going to go ahead and lock in the Moon Girl and the Hazar. 
They play the Iron Fist and the Vulture, so they are playing Kraken Knoll's Movement Surfer deck that has just become all the rage recently. So if we do a Blue Marvel here, and then next turn we do a Dazzler, a Dazzler, no, we wouldn't be able to do that. I think we need to give our hand away just a little bit. Maybe we do a Shanna and a Dazzler here. We can do one Shanna in Monster Metropolis. Um, Let's do Shanna in the Sewer System. We're going to do one Dazzler in Monster Metropolis. Next turn, we'll be able to do a Shanna, a Dazzler, and a Squirrel Girl. Now, I don't think Kraken's Movement Surfer deck runs a Killmonger. But I don't think we have to worry about that in this game. Now, we are just looking for, please a trigger of Dazzler, something where we can actually make this happen. And so Bast comes down. That's not a bad, that's not a bad card to come down. It does hurt our Dazzler, but that's okay. We don't, we don't need it. Uh, Polaris will make us cap out the sewer system with our Nightcrawler, but he is the Nightcrawler. He can move around as needed. Oh, don't give me the thumbs up. Please stick it out. Please let me see this one to the finish. Please. <laughs> We're going to go ahead and throw Dazzler into the sewer system. We're going to throw Shanna into Necrotia, and that will cap out our that will cap out our board. We're going to get the trigger of Dazzler over here, the trigger of Dazzler here. Is it enough? Probably not. Can we hope? Yes, absolutely. We could play Squirrel Girl, um, but I'm going to gamble. We're going to see if maybe we can get higher than a four power because Squirrel Girl would be three plus the one from Kazar. Uh, let's go ahead and let it let's go ahead and watch this one they move their vulture which is why i invested into the monster metropolis and sewer system because i assumed they would push that power now we do get a night we do get a hawkeye and a cord we would have been better off with the squirrel girl in monster metropolis if we lose by two i'm going to be so very sad Ooh, so the cosmo comes down we do finally get the trigger uh from our dazzler we find the win from the double dazzler if i could make that happen every single game that would be great. Now, had this one been a Silver Surfer, that would have been 12 extra power in the Monster Metropolis lane. That would have pushed them to 25. We would have lost this one. Even with the better Squirrel Girl play, we would have lost the Monster Metropolis lane by one. It feels okay, but not great. Let's go ahead and jump over into the next one, see if we can find something better. All right, next up we have Unthinkable. And we actually just went up against them. They had a... They had a Shuri that they played on four, they skipped on five, and so we went ahead and we dipped out because they could very easily have the She-Hulk plus the uh, Taskmaster combo. Um, and so Lamentus one comes in. We have our Dazzler, we have our Shanna, we have our Ant-Man, Zabu. Have some decent resources. We, m oh man, and they go ahead and snap. Oi. We might be able to make this happen. We have Spider-Woman as a, as a card as well. I'm gonna stick this one out. They snap. I think they have the better of us. We don't have our Valkyrie. Valkyrie would be huge here um, at kind of right-sizing some of those big cards that they're setting up with a potential Shuri play. We don't have Moon Girl to double down on our cards either. And so we're just going to hope that they don't... Okay, well, there's the Zabu. Um, we will probably lose, but that's the risk we're willing to take. We're going to play our Spider-Woman into Lamentus 1. We're going to We're going to hurt their cards by just a little bit. Um, not by much, but next turn we're going to focus on the blue Marvel play. Ooh, so they have the double powered rock slide. They do have Moon Girl as well. Just unfortunate. Uh, we're going to go ahead and play our blue Marvel into the hub. Uh, we can play the rock for free whenever, but I, I think we wait it out. So they skip here. They could play. They skip here. They could play the free. Oh, they have the double She Hulk, don't they? Oh, the double She Hulk whammy. They're about to slam it down on us, right? So Dazzler will actually be 11. So that's going to be more power than their She-Hulk. Uh, we can do Dazzler. We can do Shanna. We can do Squirrel Girl. Um, and that's going to fill up. Shanna's going to fill up here, here, and here. The Squirrel is going to fill up here. And that should set us all the way across the board, allow us to trigger our Dazzler. Is it great? No. Are we going to let it try out? Yes. So they skipped last turn. I expect the She-Hulk, the two She-Hulks, um, and just maybe a plethora of other things. Uh, so we do have Shanna come down. Uh, Titania, oh no, Titania, no. Oh, we've robbed by Titania. That was... <laughs> 
<laughs> that was the one card that we could not get in throne room and we got it oh no all right next up we have xyz tommy the first location is tinker's workshop we do have our bast dazzler and shanna um if we can ooh, and then luke's bar is actually kind of a specialty of the shanna and squirrel girl combo if we can draw onto our Zabu, uh, we're going to need to double down on these resources to get the full use out of Luke's bar. Either that or maybe we try to sneak some cards in with Moongirl by capping out our hand so that they have nowhere to jump to. Uh, Olympia does give us a helping hand here. We get our Zabu, uh, we get our Moongirl, we're going to be able to throw that down onto the board. We have our Valkyrie as our backup playline, and they snap into us. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and play Zabu, and then we are going to see what they're so excited about. They have a Zabu as well. And so now we can do, I think we do the Moon Girl. We go ahead and play Quinjet and we play Ant-Man. That is going to copy our Dazzler, our Shanna, our Blue Marvel, and it's going to cap out our hand so that Moon Girl will stay in Luke's bar. And so that I think might be, I think that might be very important, especially with not having Squirrel Girl. I think it's going to be kind of important that we somehow get this lane to stay capped out. And actually, actually, let's let's go. We're going to play the Moon Girl, the, then the Quinjet, then the Ant-Man. That is going to cap out our hand. These three resources are going to stay in Luke's bar. They're not going to have any space to jump back into our hand. From there, we can then play um, maybe the Double Dazzler and Shanna. Maybe the Blue Marvel on turn five into the Double Dazzler and Shanna and a singular Sh Shanna. Uh, but we just have a lot of flexibility by making that play happen. Um, so Luke's bar is, I, I love the interaction with Luke's bar uh, with Moon Girl. I, it's, just, it's just so satisfying to me uh, to be able to sneak those cards where the opponent typically thinks that you can't play cards. Uh, but if you can force your hand to be capped out, you can do some amazing things there. And then we do get the shocked face. Uh, that is not a common play line, but it is something I get so nerdy excited about every single time I can make it happen. It's just beautiful. So I think we play a blue Marvel and we play a singular Dazzler here. Um, next turn, we're going to be able to play a singular Shanna that will fill up here, here, uh, leave a space here. I think we push the last card that we want in. I think we push the last card of Dazzler there. Um, that's our play line and that's 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 the tentative play line now hopefully they don't have an enchantress this looks like a pretty decent setup for us if we can if we can make them stick it out they did snap into us we didn't snap we want this to resolve as as well or as likely as possible and so they have the jubilee that they use once again that pulls the last card in their deck which is the apocalypse and that is the last card that they have they have no more cards in their deck and so they probably have an infinite that we would have to match up against here we're gonna have the two tin power dazzlers uh the zabu <sighs> can we make it happen <laughs> i don't know uh we're gonna we're gonna definitely try we have the shanna come down we have the dazzler come down here that will push a decent amount of power uh that's gonna send us here here and here as long as our one cost card does not somehow does not somehow stab us in the back from Shanna um, like a Titania could happen. <laughs> Let's go ahead and lock this in. We're gonna gamble here. We're gonna let it play out. Uh, I think we have a decent shot in Olympia and maybe in the Tinker's Workshop as well. Oh no, maybe we need to play. Oh man, I'm having second. I'm having second thoughts. We're going to switch this around. We're going to play Shanna over here. We're going to play Dazzler into the Tinker's Workshop. I'm going to hope that they do not pull into their Infinite, if that's what they have, um, and that we're able to compete with it with whatever Shanna brings up. Because I don't know that we'll compete for Luke's Bar. I think we need to compete for Tinker's Workshop and Olympia. So they do a Jessica... J oh, no. We sh Oh, man. I, I second-guessed myself. They discard their Infinite and their Giganto. Oh, they bring back their Infinite. Oh, no. This is an array of emotions that I'm not ready for. We have the Shanna come down. Um, that is going to fill up the rest of our board. We have the Blade, which is pretty decent. The Quinjet fills up Luke's bar. Uh, the Sunspot will, absor will absorb a little bit of additional energy. We win in Olympia. Oh, we tie in Luke's bar. Um, but do we win the tiebreaker? We do. <sighs> I'm retiring right there. Uh, we're going to go ahead and end the video here. That was... Too much of a whirlwind. 
Had that blade been a hood, we would have lost that left lane. Uh, had they pulled into something a little bit bigger and not discarded their Giganto and their Infinite with the Hellcow, then we would have lost the Olympia lane. Just a lot of things had to happen in a very particular order. And my poor little heart can't take it. I hope that you guys enjoyed the video. What are your ideas with Dazzler? Do you want to see me try to do a build without Shanna, with Dazzler being the only Series 5 card featured? If so, I can make that happen. Let me know what you think of the card down below. But for me, I think she's definitely not worth a Series 5, maybe even a Series 4 cost. I honestly think that Shanna is a little bit easier to use. Um, and I would buy Shanna over Dazzler in most cases at least with what I have played and what I've tried out so far. But let me know what you think down below. This has been TLSG. I hope that you guys enjoyed the video. Later, guys.